really for the last well, most of the last month or so, I've been sharing about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and specifically on the prophetic. And I hope some of you have actually noticed that's what I've been sharing about. Uh, I just want to share just for a couple of minutes uh, some last thoughts on that. But then what I want to do, because today I want to be sharing about how we hear from God. And rather than me saying, this is how you hear from God, I want to invite a few people up to share how they hear from God in the prophetic. So that I, w- I want to demystify this stuff. Amen. Who Amen. wants to be demystified? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Well, who wants to be mystified? No, really. <laughs> so the opposite is obviously demystified. And I'm going to continue making the distinction between the prophetic and prophets. Because prophets have a responsibility. A prophet is likely to have a word that is formed over time and be carrying that word and may take that word to place to place their job is far more directional than a simple prophecy in the middle of a meeting. The difference also is that a prophet, someone who sets themselves up as a prophet, is going to be working under authority and with authority and with responsibility. And scripture makes it very plain that if somebody is saying, I'm a prophet, and is not speaking what God's saying, there are consequences. Amen? Amen. And so, when we are moving in prophecy, I think the Lord's a lot more lenient to us about some of those words. Does that make sense? I just want to say that so we we don't muddle up. A, we don't muddle up saying, oh, I've had a prophetic word today, therefore I'm a prophet. You know, I want us to keep away from that because otherwise everyone's terrified of prophesying. You know, when it says that a false prophet should be taken out and stoned, I don't, I don't want you to get worried about that. Um, so I set up planning. One thing about prophesying is, Romans 12 verse 6 says, when you prophesy, prophesy according to your faith. So, I know I've fallen for it sometimes. You make this oh, the Lord is going to do this massive thing. And if somebody said, do you believe he's going to do it? I said, well, no. I mean, in that case, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Prophesy according to what you believe the Lord is going to do, <coughs> according to your faith. That's just a little one. And there's a couple of stories of the verse I want to share. One is coming out of 2 Samuel chapter 7. And it's the most amazing little prophetic story. And in that story, David, the king of Israel, has this plan to build a temple. And he says to his seer, his prophet, a guy called Nathan, he says, Nathan, I want to build this temple for God because I love God so much. And Nathan says, hey, you're a friend of God. You're a man after God's own heart. Do what's in your heart. And then Nathan went away, and the Lord said to him, actually, I don't want David to do that. I have a plan. And he says, it's going to be David. someone from David's line is going to be a, build me a temple, and that temple is going to last forever. Now, David, and everybody thought, oh, he must mean Sol- Solomon. So Solomon built a temple. But actually, that was a prophetic word about Jesus Christ that that temple would be built that would last forever. And praise God, we are that temple of his Holy Spirit. But do you see that the man spoke out of his own thinking, he's a prophet, whatever he says must be right. But the Lord said, no, I'm not looking for you to be a commentator, I'm looking for you to be the newsreader, to be passing on what I'm saying, not what you're thinking. And then there's another one. Now listen to this verse, I started meeting with it. I will climb to my watchtower and stand at my guard post. There I will wait to see what the Lord says and how he answers my complaint. That's Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. And in that, there's something amazing there. 
Habakkuk is expecting a word from God, but he gets in a place to hear it. He gets onto his watchtower to hear what God's saying. And I, I just recognize that when we say, I'd, I'd love to be hearing from God, get onto the watchtower in your life to hear. You know, that watchtower, I made a few examples because Samuel, as a little child, went and slept in the tabernacle. He got on a watchtower so that he could hear from God. He got close to God to hear him. And that's critical. Don't expect to be speaking in the prophetic when you, you just your mind's somewhere totally elsewhere. In 2 Kings 3, Elisha is required to prophesy. Now, he was a prophet. He said, bring me the musicians. You'll find that getting on the watchtower is often a place where you're in worship. One of the places of being on that watchtower is in prayer. I don't know about across the board. How many of you, I'm actually going to ask, how many of you have ever had a prophetic word in a meeting while worship is going on? Amen? A good number. And how many of you have had prophetic words while you were waiting for a bus? Maybe, yeah, maybe, but what I'm saying is the watchtower is often a place of worship, a place of prayer. A watchtower might also be a place where you are in ministry, where you're praying for someone, when you're praying healing, when you're in evangelism. When you are sensing the presence of God, that is a place where you may expect to prophesy. So what I want to do is actually invite a few people up and we'll see how we go to be sharing just almost what your watchtower is how it is that you sense that the Lord is speaking to you that you would be bold enough to speak out and say I think this is what the Lord's saying it's often a good idea not to say thus says the Lord <laughs> because when we say thus says the Lord you stop the opportunity for anyone to um, say, I'm not sure about that, because you you just need to be careful, and that's just a bit of advice. But I sense this is what the Lord's saying. Gives people the opportunity to judge it. And Catherine, I'm going to bounce on you first, because you... Hi. I'm just going to introduce... Catherine, we are used to you bringing prophetic song. Yeah. And... One of the things that I've seen over the years is Catherine brings prophetic pictures, particularly when we are praying for people. And I've heard you often say, I don't have a clue what this means. Uh, and then the person says, well, it means everything to me. Jack, just how, how do you receive from the Lord? I don't think there's a set way. I don't think God speaks to me in one way mm -hmm. every time. But I think that's probably because over the years I have allowed myself to be open to say, okay, whatever way is meaningful to the person who it's for. Sometimes that person is me. <laughs> and quite often, I know particularly here, it could be just that I'll have been reading just my daily reading in the Bible or the verses that I might have been looking at during the week and then I'll be here singing something not that it mentions that verse or the story and and it's like the light bulb goes off and I suddenly understand what that verse actually meant at that time and, and often it is for me and sometimes I won't speak it out because I know it doesn't it is accompanied by a sensation <laughs> so so if I feel like it's, it is actually just going to come out I can't, I can't really mm -hmm. describe what that's like but I know that it's going to come out so therefore I try not to limit it so that um, it is for somebody else that 
I can, I think probably because it's happened a lot, I can tell when it's just to keep quiet. Or maybe it's just to, if there's a bit more yet, so keep it for another week and pray about it. Mm. Or it might be just for somebody else, it might be for someone that's not even in the room. So, mm. but I can, just because of doing it for a long time, I can tell mm -hmm. if it's supposed to be coming out now. Um, another times it can be, <clears throat> um, Sometimes I find myself in the picture, which might sound a little bit strange, but it's happened a few times, and so it's not that common. But um, it, it, it's we've had various visiting people who have got up, and then John has asked if anybody has anything. And um, sometimes I am in the actual picture, so it's like I'm not in this room anymore. It's like I'm seeing with my spiritual eyes a scene before me. I've been in the sea, I've been in what I thought was a the aftermath of a bomb explosion, I've been in tumbled down cities, all kinds of but I'm at, it feels like I'm there and that's what I can see. And I can I know what the temperature is, I can hear the ambient sound around me, all the things that are happening and I can describe what picture I've being put in and like John says sometimes I don't want to share that because I, it just what's that what's that about what's that in relation to mm -hmm. so on those things I'll I'll keep hold of that I'll keep it in that space and then if somebody says Catherine you have a picture <laughs> like <laughs> okay I am supposed to share this because I I know that God is faithful <coughs> to do that or somebody else might go Somebody else might stand up and say, I've just got the word building site. And okay, okay, yeah. now I can share it. Because if I don't always understand, I don't want it to be just my imagination. So I know that God will work with two or three people in the same place if it's to be shared at that time. Mm -hmm. Equally, I would also like, if I was to share something and somebody goes, yep, I haven't got a clue what you're on about either. Okay, let's... Mm -hmm. Check it out then. I'll pray that God will show one of us what it what it was all about. Um, I, I think I think that's probably that's how that's I brilliant. hear and receive. It's just about being open, like on the watchtower. Be on the watchtower. Yeah. Yeah, and pray about it if you don't understand, because sometimes. I, I might not understand something and then pray and then in the week I've read a psalm and it's like oh that's just described yeah. that exactly and then yeah. you know then you can take it to the person or mm -hmm. via the pastors to say I think God was saying this yeah. is it the right thing the right time mm -hmm. it's just about being safe in yeah. in yeah. it all oh, so you. that we don't yeah. Blurt out. Yeah. <laughs> when yeah. it, it could be just wrong timing. Yeah, wrong t timing is critical. Yeah. Oh, Catherine, thank you. <laughs> Ali. Yeah. yeah, Ali, you, you often have pictures, uh, of, and just how do you know it's the Lord when you you sense a picture, and, or, or particularly you often have things when you're actually meeting people in the street too. I don't seem to think about. Uh, uh, supermarkets. <laughs> yeah, I think when I started, I, I didn't realise God was talking to me. I don't know if you're a bit like that, mm -hmm. but you're kind of getting promptings and things, and and then um, it, a while back, a few years ago, I um, somebody said in a I was in a church in Hampshire, and um, they were sort of moving in more prophetic giftings, um, but I'd beaten in Reading in a Baptist church where they didn't really talk about anything like that. <laughs> they were brilliant on the teaching the word and things like that. And then before that, I was sort of in the Church of Wales and nobody was sort of talking about prophecy and stuff like that. So I think what I'm saying is that um, God was speaking to me, but I didn't realize what I was doing or what it was about until <laughs> I got to this prophecy conference and. I didn't even understand, you know, what prophecy kind of was. It sounded like a big word that was, you know, for somebody else out there kind of thing. 
So anyway, I went to the beating and I sat next to a man called Gerald Coates, who <laughs> headed up the pioneer movement. I don't know yeah. what he does now, but anyway, he'd worked with Nicky Gumbel on um, designing the Alpha course that came out of the, the church in you know, Holy Trinity, Brompton, London. Um, and anyway, I was sat in this meeting and we we're all sat in a circle. I sat next to this man and uh, I really felt God said, um, go and speak to these two young men over there and say it is for freedom that Christ has set you free. And I thought, oh, I can't do that. That's just like a no-no. You've got this man here who's, you know, the big spiritual giant and there's little old me. I don't know what I'm doing. So anyway, I didn't. But then this Gerald Coates, he got up, he moved across the room and he said to the two, the two young men, it is for freedom that Christ has set you free. <laughs> so I thought, all oh, right, maybe I can hear from God. So I think if you're sort of <coughs> feeling like you're at a starting point with all this, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess a lot of you mm -hmm. are doing this anyway, but might be maybe not realizing it. Um, if you're at a starting point with this, God does put situations and events and people alongside you as Catherine was saying you know to give you that little bit of nudge in the right mm -hmm. direction um, and so you know a bit like Catherine um, you're sort of a bit reticent to give out something until you get a bit of a confirmation so you might pray uh, you know please God just confirm this or get some details for you to share or something like that so you know that's how I would proceed but anyway, that for me was the, the moment, the watershed moment, thinking, yeah, I, you know, God is, can say something through me. And so, um, so that was really good. But when you first started, well, um, when I first really, I think he'd been speaking to me since I was quite little. Um, so I want to encourage the, the littlies here uh, also to not feel excluded from this yeah, because, absolutely. you know, God can speak through people of any age mm -hmm. um, sure. at any point. Mm -hmm. So uh, and some of the most prophetic words I've received have actually been from um, mm -hmm. seven to eight year olds. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. Uh, so anyway, um, when God first started talking, I think uh, he wanted to make it really obvious, you know, this is really obvious what I'm mm -hmm. saying. So it's like a billboard, you know, a big mm -hmm. sort of like you would see a billboard outside London sort of like, almost 3D, you know, and I can't make a mistake on this because it's a massive mm -hmm. thing. But over the years, um, God sort of, it kind of shrunk in size because as I got to know him better, it's like as you get to know somebody mm -hmm. a little bit better, then, yeah. you know, they don't need to shout at you. They don't need to explain mm -hmm. it or, you know, you just, so now, for example, uh, recently we had a healing meeting in here with Paul Skelton and he started praying for a lady who, had a back problem and uh, she was in quite severe pain and in the end uh, the pain reduced to one point in her back and then it was almost like the, the, the prayer wasn't shifting it anymore so he turned around and he said oh, has anybody got anything as in a word of knowledge or whatever it was so I thought ooh <laughs> is this the moment so anyway um, it's always a risk Mm -hmm. stepping out um, but if you get it wrong it doesn't matter because God can still cover it mm -hmm. but like Catherine I'm a bit tentative so I s I'll say you know as John's pointed mm -hmm. out you know I don't say God has said this I would say something like um, you know I think God may be saying this but check it out you know get a witness in your spirit mm -hmm. you know don't just assume that it's you know from God but check it out so anyway I did that and I basically had a very fleeting picture of um, a, a girl wearing a red jumper in a photo mm -hmm. and two other people in the photo but they were blurred out and all I got was um, somebody keeps coming back to this photo. So I gave that and the lady said, oh no, I don't think that's for me. <laughs> So my other strong advice is if the person says, no, it's not for me, don't get totally bobbed off and think, yeah. that's it. Because um, about five minutes later, she said, 
Well, now I come to think about it, yeah, that is for me. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that was really good. Um, and then God didn't leave it at that. <laughs> a month later, I saw her outside Bath Abbey, and she was on the prayer team. And I said, "Oh, are you the lady with healing? You know, you had healing on the back." And she said, "Oh, yeah." And she explained that she'd had an MRI scan since then. And all the discs that had kind of eroded in her back mm -hmm. had all reinflated, mm -hmm. um, and so she, all the pain had gone. And then I said, "Oh, you know," I, I, I gave a word of knowledge, and she said, "Oh, yeah, I got some prayer for that. It was about I won't say what it was. It was mm -hmm. about this, this, and this, and I got some prayer, and that was a release. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. that's the other thing. Confidentiality is yeah. is, mm -hmm. a, yeah. is an important thing. So." Yeah. don't kind of identify people but you can generally talk about them so but then it went a stage further because she I had um, a knee problem since February and um, I said oh would it, would it be a good idea if you and your husband pray for my knee <laughs> so anyway they prayed for my knee and in at the same moment they gave me a word of knowledge about something somebody in my family that was on the back of another word of knowledge I had about them. And so it was, God showed me that I could pray into a situation mm -hmm. with a family member. So I think it's back to Catherine's point that um, we're, we're operating corporately as a mm -hmm. body. Yeah, yeah. And everybody's yeah. flowing in their giftings mm -hmm. and you know, you're sort of giving out but then you're receiving back and mm -hmm. God is sort of building his church and kind of, um, I think it's back to the sort of initial thing of it is for freedom that Christ has set yeah. us mm -hmm. free. So mm -hmm. God is relentless mm -hmm. in promoting our freedom mm -hmm. and destiny and mm -hmm. getting us into the fullness of what he wants us mm -hmm. um, to be moving in, mm -hmm. just how I see it. Mm -hmm. But my golden rule with it is, um, like John said about you're just the, the news reader, mm -hmm. you don't add or subtract yeah. mm -hmm. to what God has said, so mm -hmm. I, I try and I think of it like Postman Pat, yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so all you do is you get the thing and you stick exactly to what yeah. you've seen and you don't go beyond it because that's not you, don't <coughs> minimise it because that's not you, that's, sorry, that's not God, so you stick exactly to mm -hmm. hopefully what he said and mm -hmm. try and be as trustworthy as yeah. possible. Yeah, if that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Thanks, Alan. That's fantastic. One thing for me, and I think most of you will, have, many of you will have been in meetings where all of a sudden I said, I really think somebody has a word. And I think you probably, and literally in my heart, what I see often is like a little flame on people's shoulders. And that they're not always aware that they're. Something's going on in there, but I don't know how to share it. And the Lord just sort of points, and actually, it's sitting on your shoulder right now, Sharon. Me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I God uses all of us differently, doesn't he? And, and I wouldn't say that I often move in the prophetic as such, but I do often hear from God. Um, and sometimes it might be at the bus stop, because I would say, I'm, I'm not very good at sitting still. Those of you who know me well know that I'm usually a, I'm quite a busy person. But it's often when I'm maybe walking around, I'm communing with God, you know. It's, I once heard, uh, read Kenneth Copeland, something Ken Kenneth Cope, Ken Hagen, I can't remember which one it was, <laughs> say, but it really helped me, because I'm not always one to sit for two hours and be praying. Oh. And I felt most of my life that I'm very unspiritual because I'm not somebody who can do that. But somebody asked whichever Kenneth it, it was. was Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland. How, that's what I said, was it? You were right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how long he prays. And he said, I don't often pray for more than 15 minutes, but I don't often go more than 15 minutes without praying. Think <laughs> about that. <laughs> so it's almost more like a mindset of being on, yeah. you know, Mm -hmm. on the same wavelength. So I just want to say, God uses us all differently. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to feel condemned by what mm -hmm. other people do. And I know that's mm -hmm. one of John's motivations about today, is so that we see that actually we're all different. And God uses us according to our personalities mm -hmm. and according to who we are. Because mm -hmm. he knows us. You know, we're his children. We've got three children. 
and they're all very different from each other but you know we know them you know we know them so we know how to communicate with each of them in a way that kind of they're going to get and God's the same with us isn't he so he knows each one of us so well um, so this is not about you know oh Ali hears from God like that so if I don't there's something wrong or Catherine hears from God like that or sh- and that's why we're having a number of people share because just to show you that God uses each of us differently and speaks mm-hmm. so I would say um, and I can't, it's more a sensation of God saying something but then in my mind I absolutely know that it's of God and for me it's often strategic things I'm quite a strategic person I suppose and I don't often stand up and, and prophesy in that sort of sense but often it'll be something I'll say to John but over our lives it's often been directional in, in what we do and where we go I would say we're in this room now because of the words God has given me uh, very specifically that we were to go to this place um, and sometimes I sit on things for a long time sometimes I might have to say it to John about 10 times before he comes 20, <laughs> 20 he's saying I'm just being general <laughs> before you're like oh maybe so <laughs> so I suppose that's one way that, that God uses me but other ways and I think John shared this incident before but I'll, I'll never forget because I, I wasn't sitting at home praying oh God speak to me I was walking along and I can see where I was now, I was at church walk, you know, um, just going up to the post office, and I was just walking along, and we were living up the road there in Kenilworth Gardens in a house, and um, we'd received notice, we were renting, that we had to be out of the house in two months, and um, because the the owners were selling it, and I was walking along, and the Lord just said, "Um, it's not going to sell, and you don't need to move out, and it was so clear and I went home and told John, and you know, at first he was a bit, because John, well we both are rule followers, I think if someone tells us this is what we have to do, generally we'll do it, you know, but um, he received it as well as of the Lord, and we acted accordingly, which meant we didn't look for other houses, and we didn't prepare to move, and it got right up to literally days before um, they were going to come and take the house back, but guess what? They changed their minds and they, <laughs> they decided not to sell the house and we were there several more years after that. So that's the kind of way that God speaks to me. But, but I couldn't say I saw it in writing or even I heard an audible voice, but I absolutely knew that I knew that that was what God was saying. And often it's just senses about people. You know, that's often how God speaks to me. You know, somebody's really hurting Somebody needs this, somebody needs that. And I may not even ever speak it out, but it might cause me to act. Um, but God's speaking to me. And I, and I think well, that's a little bit the theme that's coming across, isn't it? Just because we think we've heard God doesn't always mean we open our mouths. Uh, sometimes it's because he's asking us to do something, showing us something that we need to do or to, to, to show someone else. In my case, often I'll just say to John about something and we'll just weigh it and pray into it for a while and before we act. Um, so it's almost like just because God speaks to us, we don't, we're not like puppets, you know. <laughs> so sometimes the wisdom is stopping and thinking, is, is that God speaking it to me? Is, if he is, does he want me to share it? Or does he want me to share it widely? Or just yeah. with one or two people? Yeah. Or just with the person concerned? But I would say if it's with the person concerned, we always need to be careful that we are not just telling someone something on their own because that can be, and as pastors I can tell you, we've had to deal with situations over the years yeah. where people have been upset because they've said someone has come and told me this, that God's saying this, yeah. and no one else was around and it's left that person feeling very, not knowing what to do with that, especially yeah. if they haven't felt that it's been yeah. of God. So I would say... Uh, you don't need to be public about it, but if you have a word for somebody, say, well, we're all chatting after the service, you might just pull somebody else across and just say, hey, could you come, come while I pray yeah. for this person? And, uh, and, you know, just so that you can be there as well. Yeah, uh, well uh, safety on for us, and it's yes. safety for the person. Yeah. Yeah. You're nodding violently, Sandra, you've seen that happen too. I've seen a lot through my <laughs> years in church. Yeah, yeah. 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 so yeah. We, we need yeah. to be you safe. You don't need that. We need to be sensitive and, uh, and just make sure that someone else is also there for that person to, to have a, a witness as well.
Okay. Especially if it's a directional row. Yeah. Yeah. It's given a bit of a giveaway about my directional. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Behind every good man there's. Yeah. <laughs> but but the other thing as well is is that sort of honesty, isn't it, about when it's gone and when it's not? Yeah. And and I have to honour Miles in this because I've never, in all the decades I've been in church, I've known anyone like Miles who will say, actually, that was that, not me now. That's me now. That's not God. I've got moved on. <laughs> and I think that is so amazing because actually I think that happens to a lot of people, but they don't actually say, oh, I've moved on to me now, or or recognise it. So you know, it's good, isn't it, to know when it's when it's me, when it's God, and. Uh, yeah. And if it's me, I can just say, oh, I'm really feeling this about you, rather than, I think, God's feeling this. Steve, I see you moving in the prophetic in a, in perhaps a different way from some, uh, some others, that the Lord starts just, A, I've seen situations where you've spoken about actually literally being taken places in the prophetic. Mm-hmm. And also, just the way that he just, explodes and downloads not just here's a word but just a, a, an absolute something that touches heart and deeply not just particularly individually sometimes not one but many so uh, i sort of put words in your mouth there <laughs> <laughs> it all comes from that relationship with daddy i can remember <clears throat> quite a long time ago there was a period where I was praying a lot in tongues um, then the phone went and it was my brother he hardly ever called me he said oh I just want to share this with you he said I seen an advert for a job down in Brighton at the university. Immediately, in my innermost being, I knew that I knew that job was his. And so I said to him, Go for it, it's mm-hmm. yours. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how I kind of received that, but it was well, like, like, like this morning. My heart was beating in rhythm with God's heart, mm-hmm. and He knew that it was right for Chris. Mm. And because He lives in me, mm. I can just mm. let it flow out. Mm. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's I think the key what you just said is I know that I know. Yeah. And that is so important that I know that I know that I know that I know. Mm. How do you know? Because I know that I know that I know. And that, that's yeah. powerful. That's yeah. And I, I remember when we were moving house God I, I, I was walking down the street and uh, I just felt to stop it was God I suppose mm-hmm. and looked in, in the estate agent's window oh that looks a nice house came home and Shared it with Jean. And it was always God was saying, that's yours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we went through ups and downs, mm-hmm. ups and downs, ups and downs. And the estate agent turned to us and said, That is not your house. Mm-hmm. It's sold, it's gone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and Jean had a dream mm-hmm. about the estate agent saying it's not yours mm-hmm. 
God uses so many mm. different yeah. things. Mm -hmm. Dreams are very, very yeah. powerful. Mm. And they can be very prophetic. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the thing is, do you know your, the spirit within you? Mm. Can you say, I know I know that I know that I know mm. Mm. God is residing within me. Mm. Um, and it makes all the difference. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. Miles, I'm going to ask you, I have allowed time to go on. To, I think we could probably go on for another hour or two, but we probably won't. Often. Have prophetic words in a gathering, and you you often speak very specifically of this is what the Lord is saying, speaking in a first person prophetic. Mm. And I, do you want to speak a bit about that? I try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, how do you how do you hear? How do you know? What's the sensing in your? What are you feeling? What are you thinking? You know. Just okay. Well, um, I think. Every, I agree with everything that's gone before, so I don't want to um, yeah. detract to that. Um, how do I know? Well, I get a physical sensation, heat, and I've had a couple of those in the last few minutes kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I know God is moving. Often happens playing in worship too. Mm -hmm. um, how do I know it's not me and God? Mm -hmm. Over the years, I've been a Christian 54 years, and over those years, I've detected when it's God speaking and when he's moved away or he's, he's, he's moved on. And I can, I can sense that. It, it's, but how does he do it? Well, for me, sometimes like a ticker tape, I, I get the words appearing before me, not in huge, big billboards like Ali, but, or as it was at the beginning, but I just get the words. And sometimes it's not until I start that the whole thing develops. Um, occasionally I get words that come to me um, when I'm praying, it's always in the context of the Bible. If it's not in the Bible, it's not his word. Mm -hmm. So I get an impression of a scripture that God is telling us to use. Mm -hmm. uh, or rather, he's, he's saying that. And it must be done with love. Mm -hmm. I, I can't, you know, we can have the tongues of men and do all kinds of things, but it, it does say in the Bible, mm -hmm. seek the, the, the prophecy gifts. Mm -hmm. Now I would say I give more words of encouragement than prophecy. And I've been analysing my prayer life, and about 50% of prayers get answered, 50% don't. So let's get it right, that we make mistakes and it doesn't always, always happen like that. But some of the key factors is, um, you know, sometimes uh, God speaks to Catherine, gives us a song, mm -hmm. and I start joining in because I'm getting the same words as yeah. Catherine has. Sometimes, as it did with John Castle, when we were seeking his, you had a picture, mm -hmm. I had a picture, mm -hmm. and we just knew he was going to do two jobs. Yeah. That, that was the picture. Yeah. Um, and what do you do when somebody steals your word? You know, you're like, day you got the picture. Do you know what? It isn't. All you do is say, yeah, I had that too. Yeah. Because that vindicates yeah. the other yeah. person. Two or three witnesses. Two or three witnesses. And, you know, I, I've learned to do that too. To say, okay, God, I had that as well. Because that's extremely powerful mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Do I get every single word right? No, absolutely not. Some of my words, I had a picture once for a young man. And I said, you're going to Lake Geneva. And you're going to be walking around this lake. And that didn't happen. You know. So I think the truth of prophecy, if it happens, it's true. <laughs> if it doesn't happen... It's, it's your imagination or something else. I do remember in my early days, uh, I don't know if you know Bristol, and I will be brief, uh, there's a camera obscura mm -hmm. on the top of the hill. Mm -hmm. And we were moving out in power at that time and, and seeing God do, and I'm not saying he's not moving now, but what I meant was, I had a specific picture that was going to be somebody up in the camera obscura, and that we had to go, there's a couple of us who were doing this, and we did. We found that person there, and we stopped them committing suicide mm -hmm. because God had told yeah. us to go to this yeah. place mm -hmm. and meet them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've had what I call godly meetings happening mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. I was on a train not so long ago, and um, 
this guy got on the train at Melksham and mm. uh, travelling uh, up to, uh, I was going on one of my journeys and he was travelling on, we got talking and he'd been down at Melksham to do some kai taekwondo, you know, <laughs> stuff and it turned out when I got to talk to him, he knew a guy I knew who was his main teacher in North Idaho, 8,000 miles away, and I knew him. So I took his picture and I sent it off to my friend in North Idaho and said, look, he knows about your moves, mate. Because he said, I do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which apparently is quite tough and rough. And um, I would want to go there, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, these chance meetings that happen. I was at King's Cross Station. I've mentioned this before, and I was... Uh, I was in this area and every seat was taken. You know the kind of thing that happens? Everybody's sitting on a single table, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't go to an empty table, you know, with a stranger. So I thought, I hope the Lord said, just go and sit to, next to somebody. And I had three great conversations with people mm -hmm. that didn't go as far as scripture, but I, I got the key things, their name and something about them. Mm -hmm. And that's all that matters, their first name, something about them. Then I can pray for them. And uh, that's what I do. Yeah. Um, but over those years, it's very key to support one another, and love is yeah. the motive, mm -hmm. notification. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with everything mm -hmm. everybody said. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking around, and I, I could call on so many other people, and was thinking about doing it, but time has got away. But, uh, so thank you. I'm just really, I'm hoping that what's been shared this morning encourages and demystifies so much about the prophetic yeah. that you know, it isn't for the superhero. It is a gift the Lord is giving us so that we are able to be used by him to build each other up, to hold each other up, and to pull each other up. Amen. Amen. God's good. All the time. Thank you, everyone who's found themselves being bounced on, and uh, and uh, sorry there wasn't time for so many dozens more.